All right, welcome to this uh, video, and in this one we're pulling apart our water maker because after about 200 hours it failed. So in the video we're going to go through, pull it apart, and troubleshoot it. It's working again, which is really fantastic. Um, but in this video, what I want to stress is that every thousand hours you're going to need to put a new seal kit through one of these Catadyne water makers. So if you haven't got one yet, be, be aware of that. Every thousand hours, all right, every thousand gallons. You're going to need to pull it apart just like we do in the video and put a new seal kit through it. All right, don't be too intimidated. It's really straightforward and we, uh, we sort of demonstrate that through the video, hopefully. People have asked us about the water maker, so this is a good time to discuss it a little bit because what's happened is we turn it on, we were making water, as I said, then it stopped making water. What do you do when anything stops doing what it's supposed to do? Well, you turn it off and you reach for the instructions. We looked through the instructions, it's got a great troubleshooting guide, and it said that a poppet valve spring may have failed. That's bad news for us at the moment because A, we don't have a poppet spring, and also um, that spring failure means I can't draw water through the entire unit. So at the moment it's got stale seawater sitting in uh, the expensive membrane, which is just the filter that takes out salt in a water maker. It's sitting in there, and if I leave it in there, it's going to grow all over it, it's going to foul it, um, and it's probably going to destroy an expensive part of the water maker. So we're going to talk a little bit about the water maker, and we're going to pull it apart. At the moment we're out bush, but soon we'll be in town and I'll get a new seal kit and we'll put it all through. But at the moment I just have to pull it apart, and I have to get the membrane out, and I have to put it in a preservative to try and kill off some of the bacteria and algae that wants to ruin it for me. Um, I've got my silly looking glasses on, I've got a screwdriver, we're about to um, just start pulling this out, but now that I've got the fridge out of the way we can we can see what makes up our water maker and the installation um, when I chose to put it here. You can see like this space was just wasted before, so um, sorry if I look a little bit distorted with this lens, but it's such a little space that we're in. Um, so what we've got is a 12 volt electric motor here, developing rotary motion, then here is the gearbox, all right, and that pushes, uh, that turns that rotary motion into back and forward push-pull motion here. Then this is the high pressure pump. Uh, you've got a couple of valves in here, and then it goes through this membrane, and what is it, for every, uh, every, what is it, 10 gallons of water processed or something like that, you get one gallon of water. So 10%. 10% of the water that goes through is actually passed through and becomes product water. And the product water is the fresh water that we drink. So into the pump, up through there, and any reject water goes out there. There's no water coming out this reject water. Um, and so what they're saying is there's a little valve up inside here that we're going to have a look at. The poppet valve that is knackered is the technical term for it. Um, now, when I did my installation here, Catadyne recommends that you do, when you install the motor, because it's a pretty heavy old unit, that you through bolt it to whatever you're going to attach it to. I haven't. Um, I've used, I think, one inch 10 gauge screws here straight into this um, timber, and that was two years ago. And if you've watched any of our um, episodes of coming down the coast or around the top, you know we've crashed around a bit and it's still solid as a rock. So. When Catadyne advise you to do things, I think they I think they like you to do it um, over spec. <laughs> I know that the pump that they've chosen to well, this electric motor that they've chosen for this duty is a pretty. I would say that that's over spec. So it's probably um, it heartens me to see them being like that. In any case, um, we'll pull this out. Now, when I made the installation, I knew that I was going to want to pull it out, so I gave myself plenty of electrical cable here. So we should be able to pull it out and put it straight down there once this hose is removed. And then we can just separate the pump body from the engine and gearbox. Because the engine and gearbox aren't giving us the issue, we just need this. Now, one of the nice things about this little Catadyne is because it's ruggedly built, um, they've also they've tried to simplify the design as much as possible. So you only need as few tools as possible to pull it apart as well, which is a nice thing. Um, and also it's made, I mean, the head office is in the, the US, so we've got a lot of Imperial stuff here, but at least they've gone for half inch, right? So I can just get by 
with a 13mm open-ended spanner without, um, without rounding everything off too badly. That's, I always like to use the exact size spanner if I can, but I can't in this instance because I don't have an imperial set of open-ended spanners anymore. I haven't had to use them for a long time. And I can see that there's a coupling pin. You're going to have to take my word for it. It's a little bit hard to, hard to shoot on video. But I think if I had a Leatherman on me, it shouldn't be one too far away. Nothing's too far away on a 30 foot yacht. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Pascal? Yeah. I should be able to reach in there. Oh, and just pull it out like that. And that is, that's a beefy, that's a nice beefy bit of, uh, bit of stainless. This should just come apart now. Yeah. Well, there it is. So there we go. We've reduced our water maker to two parts. So we're getting a better look at it now. This is, here's the pump. This is the piston. All of this, all of it, this thing's, its sole job is to drive this piston that way and then pull it back that way. That is it. So this is a really, you know, like on the face of it, they're quite simple. The technology goes into these, um, these filters, the membranes. So they are, what are they? I think they're 0.001 of a micron. So one thousandth of a micron and a micron is one thousandth of a millimeter. So before thing, before any water, seawater gets to this, we run it through a 30 micron filter. So it's 0 0.03 of a millimeter isn't it? And then um, once the clean seawater gets to here, then it goes through 0 0.001 of a micron. So it's, it's, it's tiny. So they call it um, a semi-permeable membrane. Okay, it's not completely impermeable and it's not completely permeable. It leaves some things on the other side and those things are salt. So we actually have to pull this apart now. I'm, like I said, this is just going to go back on the wall. We're not going to do much to it at the moment, but when I do have a lot of parts, I'm going to clean all of this up and just give it a nice grease job. Um, but I won't bore you with that because we're getting into the actual water maker itself. And this is just a, this is just an electric motor, isn't it? So it's neither here nor there. So I'll put that back on the wall, then we'll get back into the, the more interesting stuff. All right, so the next thing on the list is we need to get this piston out of the pump body. So there's um, there's a couple of, what are they, one, two, they're three inch cap screws there. Got a, a quarter inch Allen key. Oh. Get him. If you're um, if you're new to disassembling machinery, like at the moment I'm just I'm just popping parts in into a container here and uh, I sort of don't have a problem with that because you know, I'm, I'm sort of used to thinking about things as I go go by. But if, you, if you're going to have a problem during reassembly, like figuring out which one's like a three inch cap screw, which one's a six inch cap screw and stuff like that, or you know, whatever the hex nut, it, it might pay to actually lay things out in a sequence as you, as you disassemble them. Um, this can lead to way more fun later on as you're trying to figure out how things go back together. Um, you know, if you're struggling to occupy your time, you can choose that method. But also, one of the things I recommend people do, if you don't have a, a set of instructions laying, thing out, laying everything out so clearly as what Catadyne have here, is take photos. Um, and on mobile phones, you can even take video of yourself and you can give yourself instructions and notes into the future just by talking to your camera. We do that when we're um, editing videos, in fact, like we'll take some footage and as we're shooting it will actually give instructions to our future selves um, of how we'd like that shot to come out. But you can do exactly the same whether you're pulling out part of water maker or an engine or whatever. You can talk to yourself in the future and just say, look, <laughs> this, is, this is something, I'm putting it here, um, it's really important. So it also helps to have an understanding partner that doesn't mind you getting a bit of seawater on, on their tea towels. <laughs> Just don't go using my shorts as a detail. Why would I do that? Mm. Alright, well that came out all pretty well. Cleaning block. So far so good. That piston's going to have to come out of there. 
official application of force? Um, yeah, so to help with an application of force, why don't we get a little screwdriver so we can get a bit of a handle on things. Oh, look at that. Come. Just came flying out of there. The piston body itself that goes through this block is pretty good. All right, there's no scoring, there's no no signs of corrosion. Catadyne have used 316. Um, that's what they say in their literature, and I believe it. Okay, this is this is all looking really really good. 316 is nice and hard, and of course it's corrosion resistant. Anyway, I'll put that aside. And I am putting everything in a container there because I'm, I'm, I'm loath to lose any small part. And all of this stuff, um, I will be... Oftentimes what will happen is you'll disassemble something, you'll put a seal kit through it, um, make your repairs and you'll put it all together. It's not the case with us today. What we're going to be doing is pulling this apart and I'm going to be preserving the membrane. I don't have the seal kit. So I really need to be able to lay my hands on everything that I took apart, maybe a week, maybe even longer into the future. So I want to be fairly organised, which is a bit of a radical departure from how I like to do things. Isn't it, Pascal? Uh, <laughs> most of the time you're organised. I think you're just a little bit hard on yourself. All right, now as we're going through these instructions and um, and we can have a look and look, they've given you nice, clear. You know what I like? When people give you technical drawings, nothing annoys me more than photographs <laughs> because it's totally dependent on the quality of the photograph. Um, but when, when I can see a nice technical drawing, maybe it's just me, some people like photographs, but when you can see a nice technical drawing, it, it, it's just clear to me. Um, and sometimes in low light as well, drawings, black and white is a lot clearer than photos. So having lots and lots of good technical diagrams along with clear and simple instructions without too many big words, you know, like for simpletons like myself, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. So um, even though I'm unimpressed that I have to pull this apart at 200 hours, I am impressed by the quality of the instructions that I've been given to pull this water maker apart. All right, so we've, we've pulled all of that out and now we want to get the check plate valve off and access the membrane. Oh. Oh. So just, that's, all that was was just the, um, was just the, the catch screw seal just giving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so this is just a quarter inch Allen key. I do have in Imperial Allen keys. I did have Imperial um, spanners as well, but they got into such a disreputable state after the last refit um, that I thought I'd do away with them and next time we get it, got into a, a big centre I might treat myself to some but we don't often use Imperial um, spanners I've got Imperial sockets but we don't often use Imperial spanners so I thought I'd get away with it for a little while <laughs> but there you go <laughs> one of the only American things on the boat <laughs> hmm. You know, and some people are just like, oh, why don't they convert to the metric system like everyone else? I don't know. I suppose if I put man on the moon with <laughs> one set of spanners, I'd probably stick with them. Okay, and now we're starting to see the membrane. There's some black scunge in there, and I don't know what it is. It's, it looks like a seal started to, to go a bit because there's some silicon grease there. So something has deteriorated definitely in there. Um, in the past. We haven't, I guess a seal can, can go a, a small way um, without just totally letting go, but something's gone on in here. We don't know what, but something has. One thing that wasn't in the instructions was removing the membrane, but a pull with some needle nose pliers overcame the grip of the O-rings and out it came. If you're still with us, what you would have seen is that this um, all, all of the things that go to, into making this water maker. Ugh. Sorry, Pascal. Sorry. I'll just put that there. All of the things that go into making a water maker. Um, the technology behind them is fairly complex. Okay, and a fair bit goes into it. But f for the end user, that's you and me, it's not that intimidating. All right, it's it's a pump, and it's a filter. <laughs> to put it at its most simple terms. The instructions are there, 
So I think they're, they're quite a pricey unit, but they're a very simple unit and pretty field serviceable. If I had the parts, I'd be, I'd be doing it right now instead of, instead of just talking about it. Um, but anyway, so we've got the membrane out. As I said, that's just been sitting in salt water. I need to put that into some preservative, some metabisulfate. So we'll mix some of that up and we'll pop it in. It's really important that this doesn't dry out, but I can just leave it sitting in that preservative. So that's, that's a good thing. That's the membrane taken care of just for the time being. We'll buy ourselves a bit of time. So now I think that the valve in here, a spring has failed. And so that's what we need to check. We need to open that up. So what do the instructions say? They say get a, a 5 8 open-ended wrench. So I would call that a 16 mil spanner. So this is all, it's all really nice that it's, um, everything's depending on O-ring seals, not some gorilla strength to nip everything shut. And it's probably something to pay attention to that when we put together this, um, when we reinstall this, all the parts, you know, not to be leaning on it um, and really giving it hell. Mm. That doesn't look good. No, it looks broken. <laughs> Doesn't it? So that's the first thing that greeted me as I just pulled that out. So that doesn't look great. So we'll see what else is in there. Okay, if we look back in our appendix in the book, it says pop it valve, which is what that is, with the O-ring installed. Okay. And this pop it valve has no O-ring. And this munted up chewed up mm. bit of junk <laughs> funnily enough has roughly the same id mm. as a poppet valve same diameter yes uh, id is inside diameter sorry oh yeah okay so the needle nose pliers weren't cutting it so we've dived into our first aid kit and we've got hemostats um there's a couple of uses for these the main one is to like crimp off arteries that are spurting blood and stuff like that in case someone gets bitten by a shark or whatever. Um, a better use for them is to hold stuff while you're tying flies, you know, casting flies for fish. And yet another one is to pull apart your water maker. Hmm. Oh, that one failed too. So this one does have an o-ring that was that was tough to get out you know and the reason being is that seat actually has um a pretty good seal it's 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 a valve seat so it's quite hard and you know what without those hemostats i would have found that quite difficult and there's a spring and the spring has not failed so the only thing that we found that's failed <laughs> is that tiny bit of O-ring. Was here. that O-ring. And I, I, I don't know why. In any case, what was happening was the pump was able to, instead of pumping water one way and then drawing water from the intake and then continuing to pump, it was basically just going psh, 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 back and forward between the intake and the pump. It, it was never sending it in a one way way and that's because after 200 hours for some reason that o-rings let go all right so at the moment there's our suspect in this murder mystery so we're going to get a seal kit we're going to clean everything thoroughly we're going to reassemble it but first we've got to just check out fraser island a little bit more on our way south okay so here we are we're in malula bar and we've got everything sort of disassembled and I got a new replacement seal kit um, from the support people here in Australia for the Catadyne. Um, I told them that, you know, like the, the poppet valve O-ring had failed within about 200 hours. Um, and so they, they just sent more along, along with their apologies. But in any case, I know it's only 200 hours, but what we've decided to do is we've got all the seal kit here. And with the seal kit, just like um, I showed you with the instructions here. It's got a little bit of an illustration of what you should be able to find, you know, like the installation tool for reassembling the piston and all the different O-rings. So I've just gone through the boring job, <laughs> making sure that the seal kit has everything in it. And that's what, you know, you want to do before you start work. 
Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is just sort of make sure that everything is clean. I've got some silicon grease here, but you know what, they, they supply plenty of silicon grease in the kit as well. Um, so I'm going to go through, I'm just going to lubricate all of the O-rings. And the O-rings that I have taken out from the unit, um, I'm just going to keep them as spares, alright, because most of them are in good condition. The only failure that we really had was the O-ring just on the poppet valves. But seeing as how I've got the replacement kit now, um, I'm not going to tell you how much it costs because, you know, it sort of varies all around the world. Australia's quite expensive. Um, but I just want to show you guys what's involved with pulling one of these apart and putting it back together because what it mentions here, and I should mention it to you as well, that all of this, putting it back together and everything else like that, taking it apart, it's all part of routine maintenance. So what does it say? Directly from the instructions, the repair seal kit should be installed after a thousand hours of operation. It should be installed regardless of whether or not there is a leakage or a reduction in fresh water. So some people ask us, you know, oh, can you tell us a bit about your water maker? Would you recommend it and everything else like that? But what you need to consider with anything that you put on your boat is, are you prepared to have some sort of relationship with it? Are you willing to take it apart and give it the service that it needs? If pulling a water maker apart up to this point has um, seemed a bit intimidating to you, then you, you sort of have to think, can I have a water maker on my boat? If the answer is yes, then it's all good. I mean, it, it's not hard. We've got the instructions. Here they are. It's all in black and white. And that's what we're going to do. We've got it apart. You saw the pulling apart process. Um, and now we're just going to quickly go through the putting together. Not every little bit. Um, but just to give you some idea of what, what's inside a water maker. So here we go, I've got my seal kit. All it is is a bunch of O-rings and various little seals. Basically what it means, what, what's involved is cleaning all of these parts. I've got them pretty clean already. Um, lubricating any of the mating faces here, the steel mating faces. Make sure they've got silicon lubricant on it. And put it together just step by step according to the instructions. It says here set aside one hour if you've done it before set aside three hours if you haven't because you're going to read through the instructions first then you're going to act according to them i'll just say this about the lubricant you can only use silicon lubricants um, on these water makers and that's because the membrane that separates the salt out of the water to give you fresh water is very very sensitive to petroleum products um, and so they say, like some uh, some lubricants that you might be able to buy in like spray form, they'll say contain silicon or something like that. But they're probably hydrocarbon driven. They may have petroleum products in there that'll kill your water maker, dead as a duck. All right. Now, when you're looking when you're looking at one of these O-rings, um, it might be tempting to just like a little bit of grease is good, so more is better. That's not necessarily the case. Um, you only need a dab of silicon on there about half the size of a grain of rice for one of these o-rings and you know you just you just want a thin film of lubricant on there the grease isn't so much acting as a seal in and of itself what it does is it just helps that o-ring shift around in its groove um, as pressure is applied to it and you know seal effectively we're just giving all of the mating faces okay any bits of metal that come together, those machine surfaces, they also get a nice bit of silicon lubricant on them. All right, now these o these old O-rings, they're in great condition. Um, like I said, we're just putting this through just so you get some idea of what it's all involved. But I want to get them out without doing any sort of damage to them. And I've found um, from my time in the dive industry a really good tool for getting O-rings out of their groove is your common and garden toothpick wood. All right. Pretty hard to do any damage with it. Even after 200 hours, you know, because they've been in a machine, these O-rings, you can feel that they're just a little bit stiffer than these ones, brand new straight from the factory. As I'm taking them out, I'm just putting them aside here. Because remember, I'm going to keep these as my spares, just in case some something untoward and horrible happens to us. So I'll take both of these out and I'll put new ones in. And that stiffening and hardening of O-rings is why they recommend after a thousand hours, um, you know, you, you really want to be thinking about chucking in a new seal kit. 
O-rings only really work when they're nice and supple. So all of these parts, as I'm going through, lubricating the new, you know, removing the old O-rings and lubricating new ones, I'm just using a lint-free cloth. There's one here. Um, just to just to wipe them down. I'm also just inspecting all the surfaces, you know, like the any sort of damage, and that's what you want to do. These little O-rings in here might be a bit more of a challenge. No, nope, our two figures up for it. So if you're in unfamiliar territory, um, like disassembling a water maker for the first time, just having some, uh, you know, like making some meticulous sort of work habits, giving yourself a bit of space to work with decent light um, and going th through things in an orderly fashion, but also as you swap bits out, try and swap them back in if you can. So the reassembly of the water maker at this point was basically just the reverse of pulling it apart and any small variations were adequately covered by the instructions. So what are you doing now? So at the moment we just want to um, just check that it's actually sucking into it and that means the, the, um, the poppet valve replacement will have worked. I can hear... A different noise. I can hear air going through it now. Oh uh, yeah. And also this preservative, um, we're just running that into the membrane at the moment. Is that the air, that noise? Yeah, so it's pulled all the air through that line. Because this, the pump itself, um, it's self-priming, it's totally self-priming. So it can handle air in the system, but before it'll start making water, it has to bleed all that air out of the system. As you can see, it's pulling down the volume of this preservative, okay? There's like a little, a cup of air bubbles that are trapped in here, but it's pulling it through just fine. Great. We're back in business. We are. And because we won't be using this, um, and we won't be testing it for a while out in clean salt water, because we've had all this rain and river runoff, it's going to be really bad water quality for making water here in the harbour. So we're just loading up the membrane again with that metabisulfate, and that will preserve it and keep it nice and wet um, until we're ready to give it a roll. All right, uh, that's our water maker. It's all tested, it's making water. I hope you've really enjoyed um, this video and you got something out of it. If you did, just click the like button. But that's basically it. Um, just to run over, we've pulled this power survivor apart and you've seen that it is quite uh, field serviceable. It's nothing to be intimidated about, but just follow the instructions and you should be great. All right.